You know, if, if you're planning on coming up to the St. Lawrence River to go fishing, I want to remind you that you're talking about 80 miles of river, and this area up here is called the Thousand Island Region for a reason. There's a thousand islands, and guess what? There's also a thousand shoals and humps. So these fish can be really spread out and hard to find at times. A lot of times people get discouraged coming up here on the St. Lawrence because they think seven pound smallmouth are gonna be jumping in the boat all day long. They can be really hard to find. This is my first time here too, so well it's probably not your first time. <laughs> Just over here fishing with with Brandon Polonek man. And uh yeah, he gave it a shot for a little bit, and now he just run off, and I will hooked up with this guy. So that's pretty good, huh? Oh! Oh, man! Something else to be thinking about is the weather. You're probably going to run through the gamut any given day that you come up here fishing. Here we go. A day like today, I started out calm, bluebird skies, then all of a sudden, here comes a breeze. Next thing you know, we got a strong wind. It's blowing in all these clouds. By the afternoon, it was as gray as it could be. It actually rained. Oh, yeah. And then when I pulled the boat out at the end of the day, nice. it, was, it was clear. It was just a beautiful evening. That's what we're looking for right there. Three and a half. And he's in uh, 30 feet of water. We started out on the flat because we had a big, we had a full moon last night. I figured they, the, the fish were feeding all night long. So I got on the water early. I thought maybe I could catch a couple on the flats, uh, still chasing around bait fish. And I caught one or two, but then it died. Uh, that, you know, we had the bluebird skies, the sun was right out, so I said, ah, let me go find some isolated structure. So I find, I looked for isolated boulders, I was casting in the shadows of the isolated boulders. Caught a couple doing that, and then that died. Then I, you know, I, I did drop shot. I went deep, doing some drop shot, you know, there's a strong current in the St. Lawrence River that's running all the time. Well, when that wind picks up, like it did today, um, it, it's it's a battle, man. It's, it's, it, you're fighting everything, and I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted to get. I caught one good one, and it, it was just go, going way too slow. So then I said, you know what? Once those once those skies got gray, you see, I'm a I'm a sight fisherman. So when the when the sky when the skies go gray and I'm not finding anything deep, I have no idea what to do. So I decided, you know what? One thing about largemouth is they were, they're going to cling to cover. They're going to be hanging out in the weeds. They're, you know, and they're going to, it's going to be very, fairly shallow. They don't mind that little bit warmer of water, warmer than what smallmouth do. You know, so I said, let me go check some boat docks. Well, what it ended up being was it ended up being boat houses. Boat houses that were in anywhere from four to ten feet of water, and they had we're in we're in August. We're right, we're in the like the middle of we're in the dog days of August here. So the grass is fully grown. So when I found a boat house in say ten feet of water with grass around it, all I did was cast right into a hole somewhere where there wasn't any grass, and the largemouth were all buried in there and, and they, they came out and hit, you know, and I ended up See, the beauty of this is I ended up turning a terrible day 
into something. Um, I had a couple of buddies that were out fishing that day and one of them didn't catch anything all day long. They, they both had horrible days. I just got lucky early on to catch a couple of those smallmouth, to be honest with you. The smallmouth bite was not there. Um, but you know, I went and hit these, uh, I, I, I fished the weather, which is what I normally do. You see, that's how I, I moved through my day. I started out throwing a spinner bait on a flat, caught a couple, it died. I went to a uh, Cinco, throw into isolated boulders. Um, did caught a couple, then that died. I moved on. Then we went to the drop shot, and then I, I ended up throwing. Uh, I was throwing sinkos, and I think I threw a plas plastic frog a couple times. You know, a soft plastic frog uh, around the boat docks at the end of the day there. You know, so, but I, I, I fished the weather. You know, and it ended up turning a horrible day into something you know so that's what you want to that's you, you gotta be somewhat versatile up on the st lawrence you know a, a lot of guys come up there they find a deep water flat somewhere and they just drift they they throw a drop shot or they take a, a big worm a weighted worm get it right down on the bottom and just drag it across the bottom on this long flat you just sit there and you keep working it and working it and eventually a small mouth will find it and you just start, you know, picking them off like that. There we go. Um, that's how a lot of guys fish, you know. To me, that's a little too slow for me. Um, and, and that's not my strongest area of fishing right there. You know, I, I, I like to be moving. I like to be casting. I like to be on the hunt. I like to be making precise casts. I don't like to be staring at my electronics all day long, you know what I mean? I want to just go fishing. 